for years now, we've known it as Project Morpheus, but PlayStation have given it a new name. It is PlayStation VR. And this week at the Paris Games Week, we saw a whole bunch of new games unveiled for it. But would you actually game in virtual reality? It is an incredibly discombobulating experience. I know that from personal experience. Other people who've had personal experience with virtual reality are Claire Riley from the tech website CNET and the CEO of Internet Australia, Laurie Patton. Welcome to download this show. Both of you have used VR, but would you use this? I would. Gaming is really at the forefront of VR. I've, I've done demos with a number of different devices now, and I've done the Shark Tank, and let me tell you, it is horrifying. I was at a launch event, sitting up on stage, doing the full immersive thing, had to throw it off, kind of leave, go and it's get myself a glass of wine. It's alarming, isn't it? It's really, it's very immersive. For people who haven't used it, it does really track your head as you move around. So you move your physical head and you are looking around underwater. And it also, because of, I think you underestimate how important sound is with this, because the sound, one of the things that they've done quite well is as you move your head, you move around the space, they've actually shifted the sound design, which is kind of uh, amazing. Um, I know you've used uh, some VR as well, Laurie. <laughs> is this something you would choose to use more often? It's like a lot of things. Will it be 3D and will it be a fad? And the, and, and the question will be, can they get the technology usable? You know, it's cable. It's almost like being in intensive care, the amount of cabling you've got yeah. coming from you, and it's not exactly light. But that's the thing. There's a real shift because you can be tried, you can try out um, Oculus and you can be plugged into what feels like your own little personal defibrillator. Mm. But you can that's use a product, product. like um, a Google Cardboard, which is just a little fold-up Google yeah. box. When they introduced that at Google I.O., everyone thought it was a joke. It was like, okay, Google, this is cardboard. No, what? It's a little fold-up cardboard box and you stick a phone inside mm. and it creates a pretty amazing VR and experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a more advanced version of that is um, is the Samsung Gear VR, which is actually kind of an off... It's a co-pro with, with Oculus and yep. PlayStation have been very clear that this is a, you know, they're only interested in this as a gaming environment at the moment. Whereas Oculus, have, you know, they've poached uh, an animator from Pixar who's making, uh, you know, adorable Pixar style movies in a virtual environment. Uh, I know there's a, a Kiwi company called AI who are experimenting with sending virtual messages. In terms of other uses of virtual reality, are there things that stand out to you, Claire, that are particularly interesting? I think the really interesting thing with VR that will separate it from stuff like 3D TV technology, which was a bit of a flash in the pan, is that it can be used beyond the kind of traditional gaming and let's let's not lie, some kind of parlour tricks of a fun video that you sit through and you go, cool, okay, that's mm. great, a promotional time for Jurassic World. You're going to see stuff like sports. A lot of this stuff is led by sports. Um, let's not lie, there's probably going to be some pornography in there that's going to lead this. I think the really interesting thing with virtual reality is not so much virtual reality, the fully immersive, like, helmet on your head. I think the future will be augmented reality. And that's where you take elements of virtual reality, so digital projections, but it kind of ties in with what you're seeing in the real world. So I could be in my living room and I could be looking at my dining table and I could have a game of Minecraft going on on top of the dining table and I'm controlling different elements of the game and it's utilising things in the real space. So It's also a little bit less antisocial. Oh I will my say gosh, that there yeah. is something uh, I was watching, but we did, um, I did a hands-on with the, the PlayStation VR on my TV show last night and I just remember watching back the footage going... I can't see myself doing this in my lounge room. All I can all I can visualize is me walking into walls because it's such a spatial environment. I could just imagine walking into walls. And also there's there's nothing fun about watching somebody else. I saw that trailer, that. Mark, and you did look like a bit of a numpty. I wasn't gonna tell well, you. Well, I actually but... am a numpty, so that's that's fine. But whereas with AR, because you're still interacting with the real world, because you're still making eye contact with the real world. Maybe it's less weird. I don't know. I think there's a lot of applications in training and occupational health and safety and things like that where you want to be able to show people uh, what it's like to walk past the blast furnace, but mm. you don't want to take them to the blast furnace. Mm. Or you don't want to take every new employee out and do a field trip. You can do it with one and, and then they can sit and watch it. And, of course, the amount of technology on their head's not going to matter to them because... Mm. It's part of what they're being paid to do. You know, already you're seeing real estate agents, um, you go on the on the web and they've got pictures of it. But if you can actually take people out there in an augmented style mm. and show them, and, and, you know, you could probably change furniture and do all sorts of things that will allow you, you know, just to see what it would be like with your furniture. Well, YouTube have also recently been pushing into using 3D video. So the I think the rock band Foles have a 3D video. I know the Opera House in Sydney have been filming some of their concerts in 3D. Overlaying something, the Opera House, 
house, maybe doing a cool um, art installation where you walk through the space and the artworks appear there for you. Or you can watch a hologram-like performance in the forecourt, but the person's not actually there. So you could be streaming that from somewhere else potentially in the future. I mean, we've seen with Microsoft HoloLens, which is an augmented reality device, I know at my work that is what everyone is so excited about and we will pay whatever it takes to get that in our office. Um, but the really basic demos they've done have just blown us out of the water and it's very cool because it's not this fake 3D world that you dive into. It's your own world but a little bit better. All right, would love to know if this is something you would actually use. Let us know down in the comment sections.